Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video, we are discussing whether Dorian Yates was right when he said that Brandon Curry wouldn't be even top six in the 90s. Well, he's got very good fullness, good roundness to the muscles, and no really noticeable weak points in that, in that pose. But he's lacking deep separation and conditioning that used to be the norm in the Mr. Olympia. But I'd probably be like in that shape around about six weeks before the contest. Six work in progress, long. work to do. Brandon Curry, this physique, he definitely wouldn't place in the top six. All right, so very bold statement coming from Mr. Dorian Yates. Now, if we compare Brandon to the top 90s bodybuilders, who would we compare him to? Well, let's not pick only one year because Dorian was specific about the exact year. Dorian said that he wouldn't place in the top six in the 90s. So let's see, who are the best 90s bodybuilders? Well, you have Dorian Yates, of course, then I would say Kevin Leveroni, Flex Wheeler, Sean Ray, and Nasser El Sambadi. Of course, there is Ronnie Coleman as well, but he was not a relevant bodybuilder when Dorian Yates competed. He was dominating during the very end of the 90s, during the 1998 and 1999 Mr. Olympia, but that would be too easy. Let's just not mention Ronnie Coleman in this comparison. Let's just use the bodybuilders from 1993 to 1998. Because bodybuilders were much bigger since 1993 and Ronnie Coleman was a champion for the majority of the early 2000s and it wouldn't even be funny, let's be honest, comparing Brandon to Ronnie. So, Dorian Yates, Flex Wheeler, Kevin Leveroni, Nasser El Sambari, Sean Ray. Probably in that order too. Unfortunately, I won't compare every single pose of all of these bodybuilders to every single pose of Brandon Curry. That would take who knows how long. So let's try to do this faster. First, Dorian Yates versus Brandon Curry. Who would win? Well, how do I explain this in a short manner? Let's try like this. I'm gonna show you this photo first, and then I'm gonna show you this one. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I think it's pretty clear at this point. <laughs> I don't think any further explanation is necessary. Let's go with the next competitor. Okay, so after Dorian Yates, for the next best bodybuilder from that era of the 90s, you could go either with Flex Wheeler or Kevin Leveroni, depending on what you prefer. They are very close, but they have their strengths and their weaknesses. If you prefer freakiness and the round muscle bellies and overall impressive physique, you would go with Kevin, but if you prefer a more complete package and better lines and more aesthetic physique, then I guess you would go with Flex Wheeler, but they are very, very close. It's definitely a tough choice, although it's not very important in this video, but me personally being a fan of mass and freakiness, I will go with Kevin Leveroni next. So in order to make this comparison faster and clearer, I'm going to show you this photo of Brandon Curry right here, and then I'm going to show you this one. Is any kind of analysis really necessary here? Would we come to a different conclusion if you compared all the poses, Brandon versus Kevin, for example? I do not think so. I think we can all agree that Dorian and Kevin here are both better bodybuilders than Brandon. Far better, if you ask me. All right, so next we're going to compare Flex Wheeler to Brandon Curry, and I chose this photo right here, so let's compare it with this one right here. Well, <laughs> what do you say? Well, I think the completeness, the genetic structure, and the conditioning are far more superior, and I don't think it's really necessary to explain this to you. It's pretty obvious that Flex Wheeler is also a far better bodybuilder than Brandon Curry. Next up is Nasser El Sambari, the so-called uncrowned 1997 Mr. Olympia. I don't really agree with that, but was he a better bodybuilder than Brandon Curry? <laughs> yeah, he was. He was. Just like in the previous examples, the reason why Nasser is better bodybuilder than Brandon is the completeness and the conditioning, but in this case it's also the mess. Nasser El Sambari was an absolute beast. Brandon is not that big of a guy, nor he is as conditioned and he doesn't have those deep cuts and striations and he doesn't have the completeness. I mean, nobody is perfect. I guess Phil Heat came closest to it. And so Nasser definitely isn't perfect, but he came closer to perfection than Brandon Curry. And so did Dorian Yates, Flex Wheeler, and Kevin Lebroni. What about Sean Ray, who is next up? Well, this is definitely a tricky one. Sean Ray, standing by himself in a gym mirror, he would look super impressive. He would look like he is winning the Mr. Olympia. But then, standing next to the big guys, I don't want to say he was dwarfed, but he looked significantly smaller. 
And that is the only reason why I'm not sure about whether he would beat Brandon Curry or not. But was he more conditioned? Was he more complete? Did he have legs? Hmm, Dorian was very confident when he said that Sean Ray was much better bodybuilder than Brandon. I wouldn't be that sure, but because of the completeness and because of the conditioning and those deep cuts that Sean possessed, I would give this victory to Sean as well. So Dorian said that Brandon wouldn't make top 6 during the 90s. Well, in my opinion, he wouldn't be able to beat these 5 guys when they are at their best. And no, not every year they were in the top 5. If these guys came in one show and they were all their best, these guys would definitely beat Brandon Curry. But what about the rest? What about the Lee Priest, Paul Dillette, Marcus Rule, Jean-Pierre Fuchs, Chris Cormier, Gunter Schlierkamp, Ronnie Coleman, and others? Well, we can debate that for as long as we want. We will never see these guys compared. Some of them would be able to beat Brandon, some of them wouldn't. But Dorian wasn't far from the truth. 90s were definitely the golden era of bodybuilding. They were the peak of the bodybuilding. The lineups were so high quality. The contenders were all super genetically blessed. Unlike today, where the top competitors have so many glaring weaknesses. The conditioning in the 90s was also much better. The guys were much deeply separated. But there is another question. What is the criteria? Is the criteria different today than it was in the 90s? Is fullness and the size more important today than it was in the 90s? Maybe during the 90s the conditioning and those details were more important than they are today. Maybe the 3D look and the round full muscle bellies are what is winning the shows. Maybe the criteria is just different. But I don't think so. I don't think so. I think if any of these top 5 90s bodybuilders... Well, if you count Ronnie Coleman, then yeah, it's top 6. Then Dorian was right. If these 6 bodybuilders competed in 2019 Mr. Olympia, they would all place higher than Brandon. I think they are all better bodybuilders than Brandon. I think the quality of the conditioning and of the genetics during the 90s was just better. It just so happened. It was better. Would these guys be able to beat Phil Heath in his prime? No, no, only Ronnie Coleman would. None of these guys would. But Brandon Curry? Not that good. Not complete, not conditioned, not straighted. The best physique in the 2019, that's for sure. But it wouldn't be the best one in the 90s. 90s had so many great bodybuilders, like I mentioned before, and I'm sure many of them would in some situations or in certain packages be better than Brandon, so maybe Brandon wouldn't even be 7th best bodybuilder in the 90s, but he is the best bodybuilder of today, and that's all that matters. Anyways guys, what do you think about this? Do you think Dorian was right? Do you think 90s is the peak of bodybuilding? Whatever you think about this whole situation. Tell me down below in the comment section. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it, of course. And please, subscribe to my channel, guys. All the best. Bye-bye.